the dawn of a new day in Nigeria as eight years of the Buhari presidency came to its end as the reins were handed over to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. All ears stood at attention, if you get my drift, to hear President Tinubu's inaugural address. The main thing that came out and has been occupying discourse is the removal of fuel subsidy. What impact will this have on exports? That is the main subject on today's program, The Shipper. We'll also bring you news on the international maritime scene on our Tidbits segment. Do stay tuned. Nigerian shippers can so day to serve you well. No matter the problem, we go solve them for you. Yes, so the Nigerian shippers can so they feel in a parole now for every level. And as soon as goods they move from port A, go enter port B with a measure within on a needle. For the Nigerian shippers can so we don't shop proper to fit here you weller, uh, work with you weller, uh, and help you fit serve your customers them better, no matter where them day. As we country port economic regulator, the Nigerian shippers can so get every Every now, to film make government consider the problem when she pass them the face, visit with office phone number four or to buy your daily show your daily lane. A papa email us for nsc at shipperscouncil.gov.ng. We website now www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng. Nigeria shippers council with a meet now for the port of an annie. Welcome back. You're watching The Shipper, brought to you courtesy of Nigerian Shippers Council, Nigeria's port economic regulator. My name is Rekia Zikru Yagoyaju. The movement of goods and services outward across a country's borders is known as export and is a means for that country to increase revenue, production and employment. The Nigerian economy has been heavily reliant on the export of crude to the detriment of other sectors, one of which is agriculture. On today's program, we feature the cassava queen of the world and follow her export of cassava flour and starch from the farm in northern Oyo, precisely Adu Awai, to Lagos. Before we launch into the program, we spoke to some members of the public on their understanding of export and its significance to the Nigerian economy. Export is moving our, some of our resources here. Yeah. This can be maybe charcoal, firewood, like that from Nigeria to other country. Like during that process is export. Although we still may move some of our goods here that we produce here, like Indomie, slippers, and so on. So we move it from Nigeria to other countries. My little knowledge about exportation is shifting goods, resources, from one particular territorial area to another. So Nigerians can really benefit a lot in exporting goods by producing more. Let's put ourselves together and see what we can come up with so that other nations too can patronize us. So it will fetch us a lot of good and balance the economy by exporting rather than receiving. I think it's a good thing that will make our country become large because we have things that we can export out of the countries. So I advise most of us in Nigeria to put our heads together to make sure that we are working, to make sure that everything we have is being mined and being taken away from the country. The government has actually done well, ranging from the support they give from uh, export grant to Nigerian exporter wherein there are dollar rebates. From every dollar you bring in, you have, I think, about $5 to, to 100 So that is export grant. The current status where governments are even designating terminals, as export terminals, that shows a lot of encouragement because that reduces the turnaround time. If you watch all over the world, 99% or 90% of the things that are being bought by other countries from China this China made that China that, that So as for Nigeria, we need to export. We have so many things to export. Nigeria's agricultural sector has witnessed a boom in the harvest of cashew nuts, cassava, ginger, and rice in recent years. This in turn opens up potential for the country to become a major player internationally in these produce. According to statistics available to the shipper, Nigeria currently ranks as the 52nd nation worldwide in exports that ranking can be better. Nigeria needs to improve that ranking as soon as possible. 
More importantly, Nigeria cannot keep exporting raw materials. Efforts by exporters of value-added agricultural produce must be encouraged. In what you may consider a lesson in export, let's call it Export 101, let's look at what Mrs. Yemisi Balogun of Saltry International has done. Pay attention, I assure you, you'll learn something new today as Lucy Nyambi presents the report. If you employ the services of Google to find Adoa Wai, the first thing that you see is the Iyake Natural Suspended Lake, a tourist attraction which is said to be the only one in Africa and the second one in the world. That community is also host to the first subital factory in Africa and the second one in the entire world. This factory belongs to Saltry International, founded in 2005. The company has grown from its humble beginnings as a cassava farm to a world-class manufacturer of cassava products, supplying many of Nigerian multinational companies with cassava starch and flour, not content to be operating in Nigeria alone. Saltry International has scaled up and has entered the export market. The CEO, founder of Saltry International Limited, Mrs. Oluye Misi Ron Loi, speaks about her decision to go into export of cassava flour and starch. We at Saltry identify our production potential export market for our starch and flour by uh, doing our research. First of all, what we do is to check the volume of starch or flour that is being used by the very country that we are looking at. And then we look at, do we want to go for retail or want to sell to the volume users, that is the bulk buyers. So we do all of this research and we decide which of them, them do we want to sell our products to. We try to get contract before the goods leave uh, Nigeria. So. Basically, what we do is to do our homework very well and identify which of them we want to actually attend to, which one we want to export to, and that's what we do before any good leave the country. First of all, if we are selling to an English country, for example, we labeling will be in English. If we are selling to a French-speaking country, it means we have to do a different packaging entirely for such uh, a product. So it depends on what language is being spoken. So if we are exporting to Europe, for example, there are some countries in Europe that you have to actually check your labeling to uh, the, the language that is being spoken in that country if you want to sell on the shelf. But if you are selling volume to a, a company that is going to use it for further processing, if they agree that they want it in English, then you can comply. Otherwise, you will have to change uh, your labeling to both English and some of the packaging labeling has to be in the language of that country. She also spoke to the shipper on the impact of the removal of false subsidy and the challenges of keeping updated on international export standards and shipping regulations. To stay in tune with regulations of other countries, we use NEPC because that is the first port of call for information. So we are very well in tune with Nigeria Export Promotion Council. That's where we get all the information. We also attend trade shows, trade programs. We are putting our ears to the ground as to when things are changing, we quickly know. But where we actually get correct um, information is NAVDAC, as far as, the con as, far as um, nutritional regulations are concerned, or SON, other NAVDAC or SON for nutritional regulations. But other regulations, you go to NEPC. The um, measures that we take to ensure that products are well received, are well packaged, and the quality is good, they are numerous. You have to go through, make sure that your factory has HECCP, so that uh, safety precautions are taken, quality precautions are taken. But then above all is when you are finished packaging, uh, product needs to be further screened uh, using scanners and metal detectors to be able to check that the product don't have any foreign body or foreign particle at all. Uh, a lot of Nigerian products have been returned because of just a small mistake in something dropping into the product. So after you have finished packaging, what we do is to scan every product one by one before it goes 
into the container. This helps us to avoid unnecessary issues when it gets to the port. A freight forwarder and registrar Nagaf Academy, Francis Omotosho, looked at some potential risks and uncertainties associated with exporting agricultural produce in the country and ways to mitigate these risks. The logistics and the shipping challenges are basically transportation experts, I mean the truck owners, uh, because some of us as a forwarders, we operate as an NVOCC, non-vessel owner common carriers. We don't have a truck on our own, so we hire. We kind of outsource from uh, third party those uh, truck owners. So we have a lot of challenges uh, using some truck owners who could not train their drivers very well. So they give us a lot of challenge in terms of telling them to go to the right location to pick what we want to pick and also coming back to the port to drop off the boxes on world uh, to be loaded on board the vessel. So we have challenges facing some untrained uh, drivers who handles our logistics uh, hauling movements. Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerian Shippers Council, Right Honorable Emmanuel Jime, spoke extensively on domestic export warehouse and the relevance of domestic export warehouse for agricultural produce. Domestic export warehouses are supposed to be one-stop shops where you know the best international practices are installed to make sure that before ever any product that is due for export from, from our client is prepared and packaged in a way that will meet international standards, particularly and more specifically in the area of agro-allied industries. Let me give you an example of what has happened in the past. We had, you know, this particular development uh, about three years ago, so I can't remember exactly how long, where there was an attempt to export Nigerian yams. By the time uh, the yams got to that destination, uh, at, at the port of destination, it was discovered that you know the the yams have been spoiled. Now clearly, that transaction could not be effectively uh, could not effectively be concluded. I mean, there's no way anybody was going to take yams that were already spoiled. Why was that? Uh, the reason why those yams were rejected was because of the processes that would lead to the export of those yams. The packaging, for example, was not properly done. The information that should have been available, you know, to the Nigerian exporters, so that they will know what is required for them to be able to package yams in a way that will meet the international market, uh, was not available. The storage facilities were also not available. Of course, yams can only get rotten if they are not properly packaged. Now, I use the example of yams to extrapolate so we can get a picture of what happens with regards to other agri products as well, whether it's tomatoes, whether it's uh, onions, any of the ginger. Any of those things that need to be processed in a way that will ultimately meet the international demand. Export, as you well know, is an international trade. You don't got package a container sent abroad to frost us. The embassies in Nigeria play a role, foreign embassies, so that they can let you know do due, due, due diligence before you sell to the foreign parties. Your bank has to play a role by guaranteeing your proceed and all those stuff. So the risks are there. All the risks associated with inter international trade are well versatile with export as well. But when you do the due diligence, one, and then you get the appropriate person to handle the export for you, the core professionals, and then you do your research, okay? You do the KYC and the due diligence. And I believe when you do all that properly, you, you are well to do, then you can go into export. It's very profitable, okay? But you need to know the A, B, C of the protocol. The council must, as part of its mandate, provide information to exporters in terms of standards expected of them. The establishment of dry ports in all parts of Nigeria is a move in the right direction and exporters have been hailing the council's efforts in those regions where the ports are already operational. These are indeed exciting times. 
Nigerians are strivers and adapters. A lot of creativity will be unleashed in the coming month. It's time now to join Abike Idu for Tidbits. Nigerian Chiefs Council staff and management convened to celebrate Mrs. Adejoke Eunice Ogundi as she retires after 35 years of service. Starting as a typist grade one, she rose through the ranks to become Chief Confidential Secretary Officer. The Executive Secretary and CEO of the Council, Honorable Emmanuel Jime, congratulated Mrs. Adejoke Ogundi and praised her dedication. It was represented by the Director of Human Resources of the Council, Mrs. Adaku Oka. We want to thank you sincerely for the services you rendered to Nigerian Shippers Council. While you were with us, you were a public fellow. There was no dumb moment with you. Sometimes I used to really be scared at your jokes because you can really go the whole life and everybody knew you for that. Colleagues described her as a joy to work with and praised her enthusiasm. Representatives from the council's department and the cooperative society also expressed appreciation for her contribution. When I came to council in 1991, I saw Ms. Ogunde at that place they call Boma Road. Mm. She was one of the people that uh, molded us into the office work. She has been long in this council and has impacted in the life of many people, of which I was one of them. Ms. Ogunde means a lot to me because when I resumed in the council, she was the secretary to my deputy director. And I had cause to work with her for years until she was transferred from my department. What she helped me, you know, with as an individual is what she helped other persons that she had cause to uh, work with subsequently. She helped me to stay grounded. And it is because of that nature that is in it about her that I feel she's worthy of celebration because she is a good woman being. Working with her was easy, and the truth is that that's why we're here. We come here to work, you know, and we come here to work. So she, she made it very easy for a lot of us. Like I said, we had to deal with her compulsorily to get things done. That's just the truth. Compulsorily, we must deal with her because she was the director's office, and so many things had to go through the office to get done. She didn't make it difficult for us. She made it easy for us to work you know, and get things done in the department. And that's one plus for her because we have experienced those airs in the past. And then she came with a breath of fresh air and she didn't have those airs and made it easy for us to work. In her response, Mrs. Ogunde thanked everyone and prayed for good health for all retirees. My experience working with Nigerian Shippers Council has been great. Right from Kano Street, Ebutemeta, to Boma Road, and finally to Park Lane, a papa, I feel fulfilled. Working with my colleague, the kind of teamwork we are into makes me to feel happy. To f I, in fact, I don't really know how to express myself today. Working with the Nigerian Shippers Council is a great lesson. The Nigerian Shippers Council has opened my eyes to so many things which I did not know before. I thank God for today. Nigerian Chivalry Council recently sponsored the Nigerian Maritime Ambassador Reality Show, where contestants came together in the house to share ideas for developing the maritime sector. Emerging winner was 21-year-old Winnie Ogusaki, who went home with a grand prize. This serves as an encouragement and an eye-opener to Nigerian youths that opportunities are bound in the Nigerian maritime space. We're still urging stakeholders in the maritime industry to explore our website www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng in order to gain comprehensive insights into our services and to promptly communicate any concerns or complaints they might have. Now, let's review the entries in our complaints log for the week 21st to 27th May, 2023. During this period, we recorded a total of nine complaints out of which one has been resolved and eight are ongoing investigations. 
The nature of these complaints encompasses issues such as extortion, arbitrary charges, abandonment of cargoes, outstanding debts, missing containers, and hazardous cargoes. It's now time to catch up on the latest updates in the world of global shipping. P&O Maritime Transports, POMT, a unit of DP World, has launched the first direct freight service between the United Arab Emirates, UAE, and Iraq. The service caters for unaccompanied trailers, allowing trailers to be transported by sea without the driver and truck cab. The service reduces travel time between Jebel Ali port in the UAE and Om Qasa port in Iraq to approximately 36 hours, providing a more efficient trade route for road trailers and addressing challenges faced by customers using cross-border land transport routes. The new service is expected to enhance logistical efficiencies and provide cost savings for freight transportation. PAX Incorporation has revealed the detailed design of the world's first battery tanker at an international maritime exhibition in Japan. The inaugural ship, named X, is expected to be completed by 2025, with field testing planned for 2026. PAX aims to establish a new company called Ocean Power Grid Incorporation to advance the maritime power transmission business using battery tankers. The vessel will be equipped with 96 containerized marine batteries and will enable the storage and transportation of surplus electricity from renewable sources. The battery tankers can contribute to effective use of renewable energy and address challenges associated with offshore wind power. The port of Gothenburg in Sweden has signed a sister port agreement with the port of Shenzhen in China. The agreement aims to strengthen cooperation between the ports on various issues including sustainable transport, volume growth, and new technology. Despite being smaller in terms of cargo volume, the port of Gothenburg's sustainability efforts and its role as a guarantor of industry access to the outside world have attracted interest from the larger port of Shenzhen. The agreement opens up possibilities for establishing green shipping corridors and promoting trade exchange between the regions. And that's it on Tidbits for this week. Till next time. The Nigerian Shippers Council is now better poised with responsive systems in place to help you and other shippers get seamless, stress-free transition for your clients' goods from point A to B. Today at the Nigerian Shippers Council, timeliness, orderliness, transparency and efficiency is all we care about. Put your complaint through to our helpline. Visit us at number 4, Ayodele Shoyode Lane, Apapa, Lagos. Or reach us on www.shipperscouncil.gov.ng. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the point of your need. Nigerian Shippers Council, we meet you at the port of your needs. And that's it on The Shipper today. It's been a great pleasure putting the program together for you. The greater pleasure is in having you join us. Do keep this time free again next week as we bring you another educating episode of The Shipper. Until then, do have a swimmingly great week ahead. Mm -hmm.